I went for my walk the other day down to the lake in front. And when I got there to the right of this place, there was a, a walk for breast cancer. And I went up there and I, I picked up some information um, by the American Cancer Society. They were putting it on. And part of the reason it was interesting is because uh, my, my mom had breast cancer, a small amount, got rid of it. But while I was at uh, UWM, I worked in a medical imaging lab for breast cancer. And this was back in 2000 and the system that the doctor professor had been working on was on the detection of breast cancer you, you can actually read about it he's got a website it's become actually a functioning tool I worked here. Breast cancer technology. In health first, a story you'll see only on 12. Um, this is after 14, 15 years, how far it's become. Surgeon with Aurora Sinai Medical Center operating almost every day. So this is the cancer that we biopsy. But lately, she's been performing more and more double mastectomies. Removing both breasts is a trend she says is driven by patients' fear of cancer coming back. But Tijo says sometimes it's unnecessary. We like to remove only what we need to remove and keep what, let the patient keep what she can. Uh, so to know that information ahead of time would help us plan a better surgery. And breast cancer surgeons like Tijo may soon have that technology right in the palm of their hands. This is very groundbreaking. It's an electrical probe about the size of an electric toothbrush. It's still being tested, but Dr. Tijo helped design it for surgery. So to have this that we could actually pass you get that? The tool was the designed for surgery. To say, yes, we removed all evidence to disease would be groundbreaking. Milwaukee physicist Bill Gregory and his partner biologist James Marks brought this prototype to life. Through nearly 15 years of research with their company NovaScan and help from Aurora, they figured out cancer cells give off electrical signals, and this probe can detect those signals. So give the surgeon a chance, real time, while she's doing the operation, to uh, get rid of that, uh, what we call residual cancer. They're also testing electrical signals in mammograms. The idea is that eventually the electrical mammogram would be on here, the standard mammogram machine. It'd do three things. It'd be more comfortable, no radiation, but the biggest thing is that it'd be easily able to detect non-cancerous, first cancerous lumps. The electrical mammogram... Do you get that? First they're developing a tool to help with surgery, and then they're going to go after the preventative cancer detection so it's clean up the surgery first where we're making our money and then we'll go after early detection which by the way at, at this website it says the best way to fight cancer is to have a plan that helps you detect the disease in its early stages CNN according to the latest data from the American Cancer Society, death rates from breast cancer among U.S. women have gone down 2.2% each year since, you know, 1990 to 2007, with large declines among women younger than 50. Advances in treatment and early detection are thought to be the underlying reasons. But if you go back to here, where they first developed a tool or surgery and then they're developing the tool for mammograms for early detection you see the priority in the medical field when they get technology presented to them even though on the one website it says you know a couple hundred thousand women are diagnosed every year and you know there's 40,000 women who are dying it's it's the second leading cancer 
uh, cause of death in women, breast cancer. And early detection is the thing that actually helps cure it. That, I mean, that helps you avoid it. Helps people to stay alive. And yet, when the medical industry is given the technology, hey, look, it, it, you know, you can go back here. Uh, professor, see, I worked for this guy, so I know. <laughs> I sat and listened to him when I was an undergrad. He says, oh yeah, well, we can use this to detect. We can use this to detect cancer. And as they pointed out, their use of that technology, it's capable to go into the mammogram and detect it before you have to do surgery. And, and Bill was telling me this when, when I was first working for him quite a few years ago. So, whereas the military, you know, they'll say, oh look, if the best plan is to detect it earlier, we'll build things that'll detect stuff, right? Uh, combat ship. Right? A liar, literal combat ship, right? See, the military has enough money to go into two different versions of the same ship. Billions and billions of U.S. dollars are spent to create the same type of ship, but two different designs. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of controversy in that. But it, when it comes to saving women's lives, cutting down the second leading cause of death in women in the United States, even though the medical industry can be given the technology uh, get rid of that. by a get rid professor, of and, and he patented other things. See? <laughs> That, that's the point of the medical industry. I, and I was there, so I know now. I know how it works. I, I worked on the original stuff. I, I heard Dr. Gregory's comments about, well, yeah, we can go in there and we could probably replace mammograms if, if we design this thing and it, and it gets built correctly. And, and that was his, his first thought. But then he struggled. Nobody would give him money. He couldn't get any funding for it. And then the medical industry comes along and says, Oh, well, we'll fund you if you you, know, you do the surgery thing first. You know? and, and, and that's the choice that entrepreneurs, inventors have. You know, what way does the industry want you to develop things? Are you going to develop the electrical mammogram first where you can save lives? Are you going to develop the tool? to take care of those who are in surgery now or seeing the medical industry doesn't have you know gobs and gobs of money I mean they can build hospitals and all that stuff they're not like the government that can spend billions of dollars for the same kind of ship and, and that's what Americans are facing that, that's what women are facing do you do you get, when the technology is there, when the inventions are there, when you've got these people coming up with inventions and they run into the medical industry, is there enough money to go both ways with it or is the industry such that, you know, we'll, we'll funnel it up one way? And, you know, the powers that be, they understand that. You know, that that's why uh, if we Google again, uh, Kid finds cancer detection system. Nope, that's not it. Ah, here we go. 15 year old. On his own. With only his mom's support, right? He's a child, you know, he's, he's, he's a scientist, right? On his own. You read through here. Uh, 
and this 15 year old although after he invented it he says the good news doesn't stop here these paper strips strips are thousand times less expensive than the current test used for detection about 400 times more sensitive meaning doctors can seek out dangerous cells faster and cheaper and more accurate than ever but if you read through the article he was rejected by many many medical people he couldn't get funding so he did it on his own and, and this is the dilemma that we're faced with when it comes to the medical industry and trying to cure cancer Dr. Maitra's lab of Johns Hopkins University. And I did think of it all on my own. And he was a so he So we get back to is the medical industry, is cancer research, is it underfunded? that all the little things that people might try just can't be funded? Is it controlled that, well, we want to keep uh, our hands on it for whatever reason? Um, you know, one doctor wants to be more important than the next doctor, or one hospital wants to be more important than the next hospital after working in the lab and seeing it yeah well you know gotta clean out your sinuses after working in the lab and seeing and watching now for 14 years and there's about 40,000 women who die every year they say so that's 400,000 wait 40,000 that's a lot of women who have died since I first saw the invention, which is now more quickly, which is now a, a tool, right? But think of how many women would have lived had Dr. Gregory gotten the money that he needed 14 years ago when he had this staff of people helping him. makes me pause and think about how we do research in this country, how we develop things, how ideas are developed. When, when a 15-year-old child can, you know, basically figure out the basic tools and everything at home, you know, because that's what scientists do, they figure stuff out. But a 60-year-old a scientist who's got a background with uh, um, detection, he, he had a patent on uh, detecting uh, explosive devices so he had, had a device already and now this was a cancer one so a child can figure it out cancer detection at home own time own money and everything but but here a professor with you know 40 years of experience he's got the latest and greatest technology and it, it gets channeled down one channel and not even the channel that people know well this will save more lives if we get the early detection running So that's how cancer research works in America. I think about it sometimes when I go down to the lake and I watch the sunrise. This tree is, if, if you can catch the main branches here, it's kind of like a heart. If you stand in this right place, you can watch the sunrise through it in the various colors. It's quite beautiful and it's relaxing. Think about that though. Thousands and thousands of people's lives are lost. Not because the technology doesn't exist, not because there's smart science there isn't smart scientists and smart young people. 
it's because of where we're putting our dollars. We can spend billions of dollars we don't have to develop two different type of combat ships, which struggle to work. And we can donate thousands and millions of dollars to various cancer research. And, and yet, if you look at the, the statistics on the research, breast cancer is only 5 or 10% hereditary. By American Cancer Society's own pamphlet that I got from them when I went down there, 90% of breast cancer is environmental. It's, it's something that we're doing. It's something the women are doing. It's something in the environment. So if we change our environment, you know, if we get at what causing it, we could avoid it, technically, if you look at it. Think about it sometimes when I watch the sunrise. Who makes those calls? picture and a picture and a picture and a picture never reaching the end hmm sometimes I wonder if research is that way <laughs>